let let's talk about those four those four um, types of flexibility. Is there one that you start with? Is there one that you feel is technically easier than the others, or one that perhaps shows more benefit than the others? Yeah, and that would be static passive. And yeah. if you're a Lord of the Rings fan, you'll love this reference. But static passive <laughs> flexibility is basically the one rule, the one ring to rule them all, <laughs> because your your static passive flexibility is the closest you can physically get to your anatomical limit of motion. Right. So the anatomical limit of motion is the absolute furthest you could move a joint without surgery, without dislocating the joint. And very few people will ever get their static passive flexibility to their anatomical limit of motion, but it's the closest we can get. So every other type of flexibility occurs within the limit of static passive flexibility. And that's because there are certain mechanical and neurological restraints which act on the body to stop the other types of flexibility ever being the same as static passive flexibility. Mm. So if you can do a 180 degree side split it, as a static passive stretch, if you were to replicate that as a dynamic movement, you would probably get to about 165 degrees you know, with with long-term training and just focus on that, you could probably push it to 170. Most people who you can see in, in, in martial arts, we call it a 180 degree sidekick where they kick straight up in the air, which is a, a dynamic analog of, of a split. They can typically do an over split. So their right. static flexibility goes beyond 180 degrees. And that's usually because they have abnormal uh, joint structure or connective tissue, which facilitates that so the the restraints which would normally act on the system aren't mm. um again we, we refer to those as being hypermobile but it's funny because you see um lots of people posting on social media saying if you want to improve the depth of your squat just squat bearing in mind that squat is a dynamic active motion your dynamic active motion will never match your static passive flexibility so if your ability to to get into a squat and hold that position under static conditions is 90 degrees or a parallel squat, you've no hope of increasing your dynamic squat with a dynamic movement. You can improve it a bit, mm. but you still have to work on your static passive flexibility. Yeah, um, yeah uh, because again, all the restraints acting on the system, you've got stretch reflex, you've got uh, tissue stiffness, all of these things, which the faster you move, especially the, the, the more they act against you. So if somebody is just trying to improve their dynamic flexibility without working on their static passive flexibility, they're just working against themselves. Mm. It's like running up against a brick wall. You know, what you have to do is knock down the brick wall, go a bit further forward and build that brick wall back up. And that's what static passive stretching does. And it's a great place to start for everyone because it's, it's simple. It's you literally, get into the position you need to improve and just hold it. You know, you move yep. to the point of tension and, and just hold it. That, that's it. There's no, there's no contractions. There's no need to worry about movement. It's just, you just sit there and hold it or stand there and hold it. That's yeah. it. Uh, it's very low intensity. Um, although the further you stretch into it, the more intense it becomes. And it's just a good place to start for everyone. Yeah. So anybody who's, who's watching or listening to this and is thinking, oh, I want to start flexibility training. Where do I start? Think about the things you want to do. And then replicate those positions or those movements as a static stretch and just hold it, you know, just yeah. move to the point of tension, hold it. Um, you'll feel after a little while, the tension will ease up, then just move into it a bit further and just yeah. progressively over time. That's how you increase your, your static passive flexibility. So yeah, if there's, if there's one that is of fundamental importance, it would be static passive. And it's funny because a lot of the, uh, the mobility mafia tend to say, uh, you know, our static passive flexibility is useless. You know, what 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 good is it? It's like, mm. well, if you want to do, you know, certain movements, you need to be able to have the static passive flexibility first, or you're just going to be causing tissue strains and, you know, cramp 